Alright guys, how's it going? Let me start this video by apologising for my voice. I think I've got some kind of bug or just a typical February cold. And I've had a bit of a frog in my throat. But anyway, on to the video. By now most of you will almost certainly have seen the benchmark of a Ryzen sample from Boostbox.com, a boutique PC site, the kind of which AMD is shipping Ryzen to in large numbers. It was actually a user on Anantex forum who found the information and another user extracted the information and did one or two comparisons. I've taken that a little bit further and I'll show you my results and also a little bit of analysis as to what we are seeing. Now the benchmark was Passmark's performance test which you can download yourself and try out for 30 days. I'll leave a link in the description below. It's a pretty simple program to run. You can benchmark your entire system by clicking on this or you can benchmark each aspect individually. For the purposes of this, all we're really interested in is the CPU mark and the memory mark. The rest of the stuff doesn't really affect the CPU. For the comparison, I'm going to use my own system, which is an i7 6700K. And it says here that it's at 4 GHz. And down here we can see the 4.2 GHz turbo. But in actual fact, this PC runs at 4.2 GHz because it has a multi-core enhancement as default in the BIOS. I wasn't actually aware of this, but my PC has been running basically overclocked at 4.2 GHz on all cores, where it should only be running at 4.2 GHz on one core, as that is what the turbo on the Skylake 6700K should be. So if you're going to be benchmarking CPUs soon, make sure you check that out and you're not handing over some free performance to Intel. Now, like I said, you can click on CPU mark and if you click on run, it will run through all this. So long as you're not running the entire suite every time, it only takes a minute or two. But here are some that I did earlier. On the left is my i7 6700K at 4.2 GHz and with a 3 GHz memory speed. The big box at 12,310 is the overall CPU mark. And within the CPU mark is a bunch of smaller tests, for example integer maths and prime numbers. Below that we have the memory mark, which does the same thing. It tests memory latencies and stuff like memory reads and writes. Now on the right hand side we have the Ryzen sample. And if we just compare the CPUs right now, instantly we can see a higher CPU mark for the Ryzen CPU. Now this won't be any kind of surprise because we're talking about a 4 core 8 thread CPU in the 6700K up against an 8 core 16 thread Ryzen CPU. So if the Ryzen CPU wasn't winning this, it would be a bit of a disaster. You may however feel that only winning by 22.5% isn't all that great. Some of the individual scores, however, are very, very interesting. If you compare the integer math, the Ryzen CPU is almost twice the score. You may know that when it comes to CPU scaling in terms of cores and megahertz, it is very rarely linear, especially with cores. There are always inefficiencies and there's a thing called Amdahl's law. And simply put, adding more cores very, very rarely results in linear performance gains. But in this case, at twice the cores, twice the threads, the Ryzen CPU has almost twice the score. Looking at the prime numbers, 37 each, that doesn't look very good for the Ryzen CPU. Compression looks okay at around 50% higher. Physics, however, is worse. And we'll figure out what's going on with that one soon. One of the more interesting numbers is the CPU single threaded score with the Skylake 6700K being 20% faster with a score of 2540 compared to 2046. Again, we see a very large lead for the Ryzen CPU in floating point math and decent leads again in extended instructions, encryption and in sorting. In quite a few of these, there's around about a 50% lead. Overall, the Ryzen sample looks extremely strong in integer and very strong in floating point as well. But what's going on with the prime numbers and the physics scores? Well, the memory mark gives us a clue to what is going on, with the Ryzen sample being very far behind. Now, one of the culprits here appears to be Boostbox's choice of memory. This is not particularly unusual. The fact of the matter is, most people buy PCs based on simple numbers. And by simple, I'm talking about stuff like the name of the CPU, the number of cores, stuff like the video card, and then they're more interested in stuff like the amount of RAM and the speed. In this case, we're talking about 16 gigabytes of RAM, 
at 2.4 gigahertz, which is pretty bog standard stuff. The RAM timings, however, were not very good, but this is stuff that the average PC buyer has no idea about. If you're one of these guys like Boostbox, you can save a little bit of money by using cheaper motherboards, cheaper memory, and most people will be none the wiser. So this is kind of what's happened here. You've got the big check boxes and the GTX 1080, the eight core CPU, and you've got some pretty inferior RAM in there. We can see that it is making quite a bit of a difference. My i7-6700K, with its 3 GHz memory and decent timings, has a memory mark of 3413, whereas the Ryzen sample's memory is way down at 1855. The memory writes are about half as fast, and the latency of the Ryzen sample is extremely poor. Now AMD has had one or two issues with memory latency in previous architectures and this could be coming back to haunt them again with Ryzen. I'm just not quite sure about that yet. But what I decided to do in order to try and even this up a bit was underclock and loosen the timings on my own PC's memory to get them as close to the Ryzen sample as possible. And here was the result of that. Now straight away we can see that memory does have quite a marked effect on some of the scores, even the CPU mark, which is down by 3%. Stuff like integer maths hasn't really changed that much, but interestingly, prime numbers are down from 37 down to 33, and the physics score is down from 853 to 761. Nothing else in the CPU mark has changed very much, but if you remember the Ryzen scores, the prime numbers and the physics scores of 37 and 726, these were the worst two scores, and they very much appear to depend on the memory speed and latencies. Going back to the 6700K, the switch to 2.4 GHz memory appears to have knocked around 10% off the scores of the memory mark and a bit more in some of the tests. So the smart thing from now on is to use these numbers here with the memory at 2.4 GHz when comparing against the Ryzen sample. So I'm going to get rid of these and use this as my baseline. Now overall the Ryzen sample is now 26% faster. The prime numbers are a little bit higher now, but it's still losing out in physics, and even though I reduced the memory performance on my Skylake CPU, it's pretty clear that the memory mark is still well ahead of the Ryzen sample. There does appear to be an issue here with memory latency. 76? That is way, way worse than this 22. To be frank, I am no expert on memory by far. I do not know what's going on here, but I will try to find out. We've had a look at the memory, but the really interesting comparison is, of course, the CPU. And there's more to it than just the number of cores and number of threads. I already mentioned the 4.2 GHz, and once again, by using the leaked baseline, we could see the speed of the CPU, which was listed at 3.4 GHz with a non-available turbo. It was also running on an A320M Pro motherboard, so I'm going to talk a bit about this stuff now before moving forward. Right, so let's start with the motherboards. All the Ryzen CPUs will run on AMD's AM4 platform, and you'll get motherboards at different segments, different prices, but all of them the same AM4 socket. Now up at the top, you've got the X370. For the mainstream, you have the B350, and what AMD calls essential at the A320. There will also be X300 and A300s, which are small form factors, but we haven't seen any of those motherboards yet. Right now, the only motherboards we know about are the X370s, the B350s, and the A320s. You can see how they're segmented. Only Crossfire and SLI on the enthusiast boards, and only overclocking allowed on the enthusiast and mainstream, which means the A320s do not have overclocking capability. And you remember what I said about these PC boutique guys, and saving money, right? A320 motherboard, A320M Pro motherboard, which is an MSI one. Exactly what this means, we still don't know. We do know for sure though, that the CPU wasn't overclocked. Now what about the CPU itself? Well, we can see the OPN string here, and these numbers at the end, 38-34, are the single core turbo and the all core turbo, or the base clock. Now, you probably aren't aware of this, however, there is reliable information that the base clock and the all-core boost clock will be the same. So 3.4 GHz base, 3.4 GHz boost clock, and in this case with the 3.8 GHz single core turbo, that will be the maximum single core turbo of the CPU. And unlike with the Intel CPUs, there are no intermediate stages. So the CPU has two default states of all-core turbo and single core turbo. As always, it's not quite as simple as that. I will get to that in a minute. 
Now, there's also been a bunch of CPU leaks. And from other sources, we already knew that there is at least one CPU with a base frequency of 3.6 gigahertz and a turbo frequency of 4 gigahertz. So we know that this sample in the Passmark benchmark is not the fastest Ryzen CPU. And we believe that it will, in fact, be the Ryzen 7 1700X. We talked a bit about the branding in the last Ryzen video. I'm not going to cover that again here. It's something I'll talk about in a future video. But looking at this table over at video cards, we can see 8 cores, 16 threads, 3.4 GHz base frequency, and a 3.8 GHz turbo frequency. So what is probably either the second or third fastest Ryzen CPU? And we still don't know exactly what the X means, but we think it may well stand for Extended Frequency Range. Now you've met the Extended Frequency Range before, but as a refresher, it's basically an extra boost, which rewards enthusiast cooling. And the extended part is basically all about it permitting frequencies above and beyond the ordinary precision boost limits. So for example, in this case, you would have 3.4 GHz base clock and all core turbo. And this here could be the 3.8 GHz single core boost. But with the extended frequency range, the boost can rise even further. And it scales with the cooling solution, for example, air, water, and liquid nitrogen. And importantly, this is fully automated. There is no user intervention required. You simply need better cooling, and Ryzen will make use of it. But what we don't know is, will this also be available on the lower-end motherboards like the A320? Or will it be limited to the B350? Or even the X370s only? Right now, we just don't know. It wouldn't appear to count as overclocking, so you may think that would be alright. However, I would be very, very surprised if it was available on the A320. This is going to increase power consumption as well. And on the lower end motherboard stuff, most OEMs, these system builder guys, they wouldn't want to risk it. Because quite often, on the lower end PCs, you also find lower end power supplies. We also got another leak showing that the 1800X, the 1700X, and the 1600X will make use of extra cooling. And even though we believe that this leaked CPU in the Passmark benchmark is the 1700X, the fact that it's running on an A320 motherboard probably prohibits it from using extended frequency range. Again, we just don't know for sure though, not yet. Now you probably figured out what all that was about. We've already seen what is the worst case scenario. Ryzen is actually on the left this time and we saw my 6700K at 4.2 GHz and that was the scores. Remember the CPU single thread which I said was interesting? And at 4.2 GHz it was 20% ahead. But the other really interesting one was Ryzen's massive lead in integer maths. But let's take what I consider to be the most likely scenario here which would be the Ryzen sample 3.4 GHz all-core turbo and 3.8 GHz on the single-core turbo. So in other words, even though the Passmark benchmark suggests that turbo wasn't working, I believe it actually was. But I also believe that XFR, extended frequency range, is probably not available. So what we do have here is a 1700X out the box 3.4, 3.8 GHz. My 6700K at those speeds and similar memory can be seen on the right. The lead in CPU single thread has been cut to 8% and the gap in the integer maths and floating point must be a bit of a worry to Intel. In quite a few cases here, it's starting to look like Ryzen is twice as fast with twice the cores and it's not that far behind in pure single threaded performance either. And finally, for those of you who dare to dream, if I'm wrong about the turbo, and this Ryzen sample, the 1700X, actually doesn't have turbo available to it and doesn't have XFR either and was effectively running at 3.4 GHz for the entirety of this benchmark. The 6700K at 3.4 GHz scores this. Ryzen would be ahead even in single threaded performance versus the 6700K by 3%. The gap in the integer maths is now getting closer to three times rather than twice. And obviously, it looks pretty good for Ryzen and the rest. I'm just what I say, I really feel that this is unlikely. I just don't think that Ryzen will be faster in CPU single thread, but it's certainly an entertaining thought. So like I said in my last Ryzen video, there will be quite a lot of leaks. I'm not entirely convinced that this was a leak. I've got the feeling that AMD has sort of planned this from the start. It's just all a little bit too convenient. We get this leak, but the reality of it is we are none the wiser. 
And it's all really down to this A320 motherboard. We just don't know if XFR is working. We don't know if Turbo was available. And what that's meant is we could be looking at a situation where Ryzen is 3% faster in single threaded performance or Skylake is 20% faster in single threaded performance. I do however feel that the reality is probably a little bit closer to the middle of those two numbers. There will undoubtedly be even more leaks coming over the next week and you all probably know by now that the launch is not that far away. By my reckoning you're talking maybe a couple of weeks so you can really expect the leaks to come thick and fast and they will be real leaks this time. I've been collecting a bunch of parts and I will have my test bench built and ready to go. All I need now is an AM4 motherboard and one or two Ryzen CPUs to go along with it. I'll catch you later guys. 